Of a Scottish Highlander's origin, Flora MacDonald's true rise in fame came not from her American dealings, but from her dealings with the Jacobites. After Charles the Pretender arrived to retake the Stuart throne, he won a string of victories but was devastated by the English in 1745 at the Battle of Culloden. The affluent Flora played a crucial role in his escape, ensuring his disguised passage to safety in France. For this action, Flora has become something of a maiden or saintly figure for the old Jacobite cause. Later, she had moved with her husband, Alan MacDonald, to a wealthy plantation home in North Carolina, where many other Scottish Highlanders themselves had settled in the interior country. When the American Revolutionary cause had begun, however, many Highlanders refused to join the Patriots. B.J. Ramage claims that, in spite of the strong feeling for the patriotic cause which existed among the people of North Carolina, there was much lukewarmness and even opposition to it among the settlers of the interior. This difference of strong opinion among the colonists was largely the outgrowth of the diversified character of the population. Her husband joined the Loyalist cause and took up arms for the crown, but he and his sons were ambushed and imprisoned by Continental forces. This imprisonment led Allen eventually to Nova Scotia, where Flora was able to join him after a period of solitude and separation. In her solitude, the plantation was reported to have been burned and plundered by Patriot forces before her very eyes. Returning to the Isles, Flora reportedly fractured her arm when scrambling below deck for safety from an apparent enemy sail, and was never quite able to recover from ill health once she reached Britain. Allen applied for compensation, but Dorothy Quinn notes that the government was only able to grant him less than half of what he needed to reestablish himself in Nova Scotia. In the end, they lived together at a family estate until she passed in 1790. According to Anne Hagen, Flora MacDonald has been presented as a literary figure of Jacobitism, Scottish and English reconciliation, and a pedagogical womanhood for young female readers. These are all traits that have been developed due to her actions in the British Isles, but I personally would add another literary trope that could be applied to Flora concerning this translation, that being the character of the tragic wife, separated from her husband by war and afflicted by both unfortunate circumstance and rapacious loss. She died afflicted by injury and loss, but she at no time lost her dignity nor did she bear her burdens entirely alone in the end. I will leave you with an excerpt from a letter of hers written late in life. The cast in both my arms are living monuments of my sufferings and my distresses, and the long goal confinement which my husband underwent has brought us on such disorders that he totally lost the use of his legs, so that I may fairly say that we have both suffered in our person, family, and interest, as much if not more than any two going under the name of refugees or loyalists, without the smallest recompense. <laughs>